Oh yeah, it's that kind of video. A long time ago. Cartoon Network was looking to expand its programming to add to its growing list of cartoon cartoons. And why not? When they were cranking out hit after hit after hit after I Am Weasel, after hit after hit after hit after Mike Lewinog, they were on a hot streak. Cartoon Network might have been the new kid on the block, but it was no slouch when it came to putting out the good stuff. They weren't even afraid to go after the big competition. Hurry up! We're not even supposed to be on this channel! Cartoon Network is. Ooh, hey, pretty mama. Johnny! So, in 2000, Cartoon Network hosted The Big Pick Weekend, a showcase of 10 different pilots that viewers would get the vote on, with the winner getting a full series. You know, because kids make the best judges for new cartoons. So, you want a realistic, down-to-earth show that's completely off the wall and swarming with magic robots. That's right. All jokes aside, it was a really cool idea. Kinda like What a Cartoon Show or Oh Yeah Cartoons, but the people watching it actually had some input. If they had done this during that time, you can bet we'd be saying way more Super Santa and a whole lot more Sledgehammer Opossum. Look, there he is quick! Crack him with this brick! <laughs> The first big pick had stuff like Prickles the Cactus and Uncle Gus, which I remember more from the Flash games than the actual shorts. Long hair and Double Dome is another one I remember, mostly because I just wanted to eat the weird fruit in it. It even had what the f ever happened to Robot Jones. But the pilot that's important to today's video is Meet the Reaper. to be a swirling vortex of pure evil coming out of your floor. Created by Maxwell Adams. Hello. Yes? Yeah, it's uh, me, Maxwell. Maxwell who? Um, Maxwell Adams. Who is this? I remember watching this pilot when it aired, the story of a boy and a girl enslaving the Grim Reaper, voiced by a black man. Uh -huh. It was darker than most cartoons on the network, creepier, and with a lot of mood put on display. The only other thing that was like it was Courage, though Grim was a bit more upbeat than that, being more of a comedy horror than a horror comedy. I was really into it, and I guess everyone else was too because it won 57% of the vote. I guess if you're asking what happened to Robot Jones, the answer is that he got put in his place. He, uh, he got a show later. But yeah, with a spot at the table safely secured, a full order was placed for the series. But there were about to be a few changes made. Cartoon Network was all in on Billy and Mandy, but they wanted it to have another series in it to serve as a middle cartoon. Like how Dexter's Lab had Dial M for Monkey and Justice Friends and Cow and Chicken had I Am Weasel. Luckily, Maxwell had just the thing because he had just completed another short for Cartoon Network. And that short was Evil Con Carne. The two shorts were packaged together into a show called Grim and Evil, and the grim parts of the show would usually have an Evil Con Carne short in between them, sometimes flipping it with two evils and one grim. Eventually, however, the two shows were both given their own series, similar to Cow and Chicken and I Am Weasel. But while the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy would go on to have six seasons, three TV movies, and two video games made for it, Evil Con Carne would call it quits after only 13 half hour episodes. But why was that? Was Evil Con Carne not doing that well? Did kids not take to it like Billy and Mandy? Did Major Dr. Gastly bring up too many confusing feelings? You all saw the thumbnail, you're here for the same reasons I am. Anyway, we're gonna talk about all of that today. I'm your host, and soon to be dictator, D'Angelo Edwards. And today, I'm taking my hat off to Evil Con Carne. <laughs> Here I go, I'm about to freak the flow About the Cartoon Network And things they show We got the super adventures Tune heads and late night It's black and white But everything's alright But I'll break it down a little bit more Tell you what they have in store With his tunes you're looking for We got Fred Flintstone And Body Rubble My man hmm. Major Dr. Gastly Suggestions? Well, Chief, the best thing to do in these situations is to listen to your gut. 
I'm hungry. Alright, so what is Evil Con Carne even about? You know, I'll just let them explain it. Once upon a time, there was a jillionaire playboy who was blown up in a tremendous explosion. His brain survived. Stomach too! And was attached to the body of a stupid circus bear. I am that brain. My name is Hector Con Carne, and I will one day rule the world! <laughs> there you go, all caught up. And I get a free 10 seconds that I don't have to edit. We both win here. So yeah, Evil Con Carne tells the story of Hector Con Carne. An evil jillionaire playboy turned would-be dictator that aspires to take over the world, despite the fact that he's been reduced to nothing but a brain in a jar. Stomach too! Right, right, stomach too. What really bothers me is that the show is called Evil Con Carne, which translates to evil with meat. But they couldn't even save Hector's! Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. This is Evil Sin K Carne. I can't find it. Will you help me find it? But missing Hammer aside, this show follows Hector as he comes up with various schemes for world domination. He's aided by General Scar, a sadistic man with lofty goals of overthrowing Hector one day. The only thing stopping him being his constant tendency to get the short end of the stick. I also kinda get weird vibes from him. Yes! Yes! Ha 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 ha! All mine! All mine! Couldn't tell you why though. He's also aided by Major Dr. Gasly, who. Look, I'm not gonna beat around the bush, especially when there's better things to beat. Gasly is the reason I think about this show so much. Just look at how they drew her. She's like six or seven kinks rolled into one character, and I'm into all of them. I can get you off. They knew what they were doing, and darn it, bless them for that. These are the three main characters of the show, and together they work pretty well, as a group of incompetent villains that rarely, if ever, follow through on their goals. While Billy and Mandy mostly focused on parodying horror stuff, Evil Con Carne was mostly focused on stuff like Saturday morning cartoons. You know, think things like G.I. Joe and Johnny Quest. There's even some characters in the episode that look like the Quest family. And who's the furry looking weasel next to you? Oh, that's just my stepson, Dick. <sighs> Real son, Rick! That's nice. However, rather than telling it from the sides of the heroes, this show focused on the bad guys, giving it a cool new angle. And after taking a look at the crew Hector put together, it's no wonder the good guys always win in shows like these. He has what might possibly be the dorkiest army ever. None of them can fight, none of them can shoot, some of them can't even wash up right without help. How are you gonna take over the world when you can't scrub your own butt? To be fair though, Hector isn't much better. Voiced by Phil Lamar, who I'm sure you know as every black character in a 5 mile radius. I'm not sure if he did better when he had a body, but as he is now, he kinda sucks at his job. He even did better when he was a kid. But even with constant failure, he still tries to keep his dream alive of ruling the world. And as long as he's got his brain... Stomach too! Yeah, yeah, stomach too. As long as he's got his brain and stomach, he's gonna keep trying. Though he wouldn't be able to do anything if he wasn't attached to Boskov, a runaway circus bear that now serves as Hector's body. He was actually gonna be a gorilla named Bosco at first, but this was changed because they thought it was too close to Monsieur Mala from DC Comics. And the name Bosco was already taken by the mascot of a chocolate syrup. Most of the time this works out, with Hector controlling most of Boskov's movements. But he's still a wild animal, and also an idiot, so he frequently does stuff on his own, usually leading to Hector getting hurt. Hey! What the? Don't scrub with me, you idiot! Most of Hector's scheming involves finding ways to replace Boskov as his body. Even the very first episode revolves around him trying to get a new robot body, after both him and his team get decimated by a group of commandos. To be fair, I would be mad too. The beatdown they got was brutal. There is one episode called Ultimate Evil, however, where after pushing Boskov to his limits, he actually manages to turn him into a one bear army. But the only problem with that is that he doesn't care who he's beating up, which means that Hector is fair game too. But at least most of the time, Hector does show that he cares about Boskov, even if most of the time he's annoyed by him. He's actually not that bad of a guy in general, at least to his so-called friends. Though, one of those friends wants to be a whole lot more. Cartoon Network.
Hey guys, in case you haven't heard, I'm working on my very own cartoon, Screen Time, a show about young artists trying to make a name for themselves in the social media ruled world, all while juggling jobs, relationships, and everything in between. I'm hoping to bring back that old MTV Adult Swim style of adult shows. Think stuff like Clerks Animated, Mission Hill, and Downtown. I'm currently working on a short, so if you want to help me make it, you can leave a donation or purchase a commission. Link in the description. Help me make something special. She doesn't love you, Chief! I love you! Why can't you just love me? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Enter Major Dr. Gasly. Don't mind if I do! She's played by Grey Griffin, which means hide the redheads or she'll voice them. And Gasly is no exception, being the nerdy but sweet mad scientist for Evil Con Carne. While earlier in the series, she was mostly shown to just want to invent stuff with reckless abandon, being fiercely loyal to Hector. As the series went on, that loyalty was shown to come from her unrequited love for the brain. This isn't some little crush, she is deeply into him, fantasizing about him all the time. She's actually been in love with him ever since she saw him, back when he actually had a body. And I can understand that. Every glimpse of Hector pre-explosion showed that he was pretty hot. But the thing that I don't get is that Ghastly knows what Hector looks like. But every time she has a fantasy about him, it's always about him in his brain form. You know what his body looks like. Why do you want to take a ride on the brain train? Whatever, man. You know she's got a body pillow somewhere with Hector printed on it. And that wet spot on it ain't water. Oh, oh, Hector, you beast. Oh, Hector. Yes? Hector, Hector. Yes, what do you want? <laughs> Yes, hello! She's even the one who saved Hector's life, putting his brain... Stomach too! Okay, last one. She's the one who put his leftover parts in the jars attached to Boskov. However, despite her numerous attempts, Hector doesn't really pay her any mind, usually ignoring her, and sometimes even insulting her. Well, at least I'm not a big nerd, like you, a fat, stinking nerd. Fat! You did not have to do that. You knew you did not have to do that. How could you have done that? Which I don't get, because are we looking at the same lady? I could understand if it were like early Ghastly, but she gets a major glow up as the series goes on. This is actually a good time to bring up the crazy art shifts this show went through. Back when it was still grim and evil, both shows had pretty much the same art style. But like with most shows, the longer they go on, characters get simplified, styles get shifted, and it usually happens gradually so you don't notice it until you go back to old episodes. Everyone kind of had like a squish down squat kind of look, but eventually Billy and Mandy swapped to the style they would use until it concluded, and Evil Con Carne followed along with it, giving us the new and improved Ghastly. And I think overall it made both shows look even better. The shapes were a lot more streamlined, and it gave everyone a way better silhouette overall. The backgrounds look cleaner too, but I guess in an effort to differentiate the two shows, Evil Con Carne went with another all new art style, this time going for like a really sad saturated kind of look, with more details in the characters. And it's not bad per se, just kind of hard on the eyes after a while. Also, not completely sold on the new look for Boskov, way too many moving parts. It also just feels like doing this style will cost more money overall. With all the new colors, effects, and shading, it did succeed from standing out from Billy and Mandy though, and it's actually storyboarded really well, giving a real sense of scope to the world. Everything just feels so big, even ghastly sometimes. <laughs> Who's up for popcorn in a movie? Tonight's episode, The Writer's Barely Disguised Fetish. But yeah, anyway, Major Dr. Gasly is a big part of why I think about this show so much. And it's not just because her hips are the size of her head, though that doesn't hurt. She brings a great dynamic with Hector, as eventually she starts getting tired of his constant abuse and ignorance, and starts fighting back, and it's always hilarious. But the craziest thing about their relationship is that it's shown in the future, they actually do hook up, and even have a kid. I... I just have so many questions. Like, does he get his body back? Did they just make like a clone? Does she f a bear? Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. 
I just want to know. Anyway, it's whatever. She's still hot. With at least one of the side characters, Estro, realizing it. He is super into Ghastly, showering her with gifts and attention. But he's also a total creep, and Homegirl isn't having it. Homegirl can get a man on her own. Homegirl don't even have to work. Homegirl get that paper all on her own. Stop that. You're white. I'm homegirl. He's a very obvious parody of Destro from G.I. Joe. However, while Destro wears his mask as a symbol of respect for his ancestor, Estro wears his because he's hot, and he has to hide his face away so he won't be swarmed. Another major side character is Cod Commando, who is actually voiced by Maxwell Adams himself, mostly talking in blahs. <laughs> he's a parody of all those super tough macho characters from the 80s. And I won't lie, watching him take out all of evil Con Carne with two concrete brick launchers was pretty rad. In the rare moments where he's treated just like an actual fish are great. He's the top agent of Sport, another G.I. Joe parody, who are the main rivals of Hector. There was, however, one episode where he wasn't voiced by Maxwell, and that was the episode The Pie Who Loved Me. We all live in a beautiful world. The rocks, the trees, the tiniest squirrel. Billions of people with bright smiling faces. Boys with golf clubs, young girls with braces. Back in the day, Cartoon Network loved to give shows musical episodes. Libretto from Dexter's Lab, See Me, Feel Me, Know Me from Powerpuff Girls. And who doesn't remember the Billy and Mandy episode where Voltaire shows up to do a song? And The Pie Who Loved Me was the musical episode for Evil Con Carne. And it's great. Boron is my favorite of the periodic elements. I built laser guided robots programmed for self defense. It mostly focuses on Evil Con Carne taking over the world, using the mind controlling pies that Ghastly made. Though for most of the episode, I was mostly thinking about how jealous I was of those berries. In this episode, Cod Commando was voiced by Robert Picardo to give him a better singing voice. And man, that fish has got some pipes. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. But we've had too much pie. Na, 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 na. All this stuff was great, but it takes a whole lot more than a mad genius with a dumpy to save a show. And eventually, Evil Con Carne would draw to a close. But before we talk about that, let's dive into one last character. Right after this break. What's inside that pie? The secret ingredient is love. That's not even a real game. Sure it is. All the kids play it. Yeah, I bought a booster pack yesterday. All right, we've come this far and I've still barely talked about General Scar. He's voiced by Armin Shimmerman. And if you're a total dweeb, you might recognize him as Quark from Star Trek. He's also based on Hare Star from the Preacher series. Scar is a one-eyed megalomaniac who wants to control the world, even if it means working under Hector. The feelings he has for his boss ranging from sarcastic dismissal to outright hatred. He basically plays the role of the show's butt monkey, getting hurt the most often, though he does have a few small victories over Hector. <laughs> oh well, we gotta go. See ya, sour puss. <laughs> but the most interesting thing about him isn't the fact that he wants to overthrow Hector. It's the fact that he becomes one of Maxwell Adams' most long-lived characters. So as I'm sure you're all aware by now, Evil Concarne did not last long. For a while, most people thought that they dropped it because it wasn't doing that well compared to Billy and Mandy, but they actually had pretty much the same ratings. The fact of the matter was that running two shows was a bit too much for both Maxwell and Cartoon Network. 
So when they approached them saying that one would have to end, Maxwell chose Evil Con Carne. Which I understand, you can get a whole lot more out of horror tropes than G.I. Joe. And with both shows pretty much having the same kind of humor, it makes sense to go for the one that had the better staying power. Even if it meant no more ghastly. It's all a bunch of shit! It's all a bunch of goddamn shit! So, Evil Concarne died, while Billy and Mandy went on to last for quite a while, but that didn't stop the characters from showing up from time to time, especially Scar, who eventually joined the cast permanently as a side character. Hey everybody, look! I'm a used car salesman! Be careful with that! It's an atomic- <laughs> Hot Pants Raygon. And I kind of like him more in Billy and Mandy, just because of how Billy treats him. You disgust me! I thought you were bad! You ain't bad! You ain't nothing! <laughs> like, what did Scar do to deserve this? When he gets to Billy and Mandy, he wants to try and live a reformed life, becoming a gardener, but the constant annoyance of his neighbors tend to drive him back to his old ways. There's actually an episode of Billy and Mandy that serves as a finale to Evil Concarne, though. Company Halt shows both Hector and Gashly return to Scar, hoping to start up the old business again, after being bought out by a large media corporation. A cheeky little nod to Cartoon Network. And this is probably the best they've ever looked, with the designs finally being nailed down without all the extra shading and saturation. And it's a fun little farewell to the whole gang. Well, not quite a farewell, because we would be seeing Scar one last time. <laughs> Yep, Scar reappears once again in the special Underfist, joining Jeff the Spider, Fred Fred Burger, Haas Delgado, and Irwin as part of a crime-fighting team, permanently making him one of the good guys. Well, maybe more of just like an okay guy. Dude still loves violence, which I find relatable. It was planned to be a spin-off to Billy and Mandy, but it never went anywhere beyond the special. But I do find it funny that Scar almost outlived both Evil Concarne and Billy and Mandy. But Underfist proved to be a stopping point for both series. And hey, that's not too bad a way to go out. Underfist, yo! I got an idea. Why don't we all play a nice driving game? Yeah, that sounds like fun with a capital F. What is wrong with you, man? I mean, really? For a long time now, I feel like Evil Con Carne has been seen as like a failed side project compared to Billy and Mandy, and I don't think that's fair. Sure, the shows shared a lot of similarities, that's just gonna happen when you share a creator, but while the humor was fairly similar, the presentation and the characters made it stand out. It was cool seeing the story from the side of the villains, and that perspective gave them the freedom to tell some pretty outlandish stories. Sure, the jokes could be a little mean, and in some cases a bit problematic. Cheerio, Duffers! I am the Lady of the Lake. But hey, it is what it is. And what it is, is a dumb, horny little cartoon that I think deserves more love. It didn't leave as much of a mark as Billy and Mandy, but it deserves to be judged for what it accomplished, not by what it was paired up against. And people do remember it. It had a small cameo in OKKO, OK and in the show Villainous, that one cartoon that Tumblr went crazy for a while back, you can even see Hector, Ghastly, and Scar suing them for basically ripping them off. A nice little bit of recognition. But for now, I'm I'm pretty sure this is the last of Evil Contarne that we'll be seeing. And I think that's okay, because what we got was pretty darn fun. These times like these, after a secretary breaks up your evil empire from within, that you appreciate the good things in life. Your friends, your mad scientists, even your big stupid body. Group hug everybody! Yo! You're forgiving someone! Hello? Not too shabby for a brain in a jar. Stomach too! I warned you. 